Hey guys, welcome back to Render Eyes, and today's video is going to be kind of a breakdown of the scene I did for the monthly contest held in the Blender Discord server. The theme for the month of May was the Arctic Machine, so I decided I'd show you guys how I got this results using Blender and also a little bit of Photoshop to save some time. Also, I haven't posted a video in a month because I've been busy with this scene as well as a game that me and my friend JJ are making together. This is the first game from Fluke Interactive so we wanted to make sure it's good. Enough of that, let's get into the video. If you want more details about the game, you can follow the link in the description. Let's open up Blender and delete the default cube because we have no use for it anytime soon. Make sure to head over to the add-ons and turn on the ANT and landscape add-on. Now if you go to add mesh, we'll see the landscape option. You can use this special mesh to create your own landscapes. Tweak the settings till you find something that fits the scene that you're making. I don't really remember the settings I used for this landscape because I did not note them down while I was making it and it's been a pretty long time since I made this so... I'm sorry but you have to experiment and find it out on your own. I mean, you'll learn a lot if you do it like this too. Since we had a limitation of only submitting a single render, I decided to make the scene look good only from the camera's point of view. So let's add a camera now to get an idea of where we want everything to be. I put my camera somewhere low around here to make everything seem huge, which might not be working just yet but it will look good after you put everything together. Now let's make the center of attention, the portal. I wasn't planning anything special while designing this one. I simply wanted to make it look very abstract. So I started off by making the stands for this portal, which ended up looking very weird and ancient, but I made some changes to it to make it look a bit more natural. And as any model I make, it starts off as a cube. I used a mirror modifier on it to make both the pillars at the same time. Extruded the top face and rotated it a couple of times on the Z axis to get this stretch spiral look. After that I made small extrusions for the details and added some loop cuts to make this shape. That was the main design for the pillar. Let's duplicate this pillar and scale it up a bit like this. I used an add-on called Rando Mesh to destroy this pillar and get this wire-framed look. I'll leave the link in the description if you want to use it for your project. But I basically set the mode to faces and iterations to about 3 with all the checkbox ticked. Except for keep original mesh and hit destroy that mesh. So well, destroy it. And for the portal gate, I used a cylinder without a cap fill. Just scaled it to fit it in and extrude everything and scaled it in to give it that thickness. You can also use the solidify modifier if you're wondering. I also added a bit of subsurf and bevel to make it smoother but still retained some of that shape. I duplicated the ring twice and adjusted the three rings to something that looks a bit more interesting. Then I destroyed these rings again individually but this time with poking, wireframe and extrude random deselected. I also made another ring and destroyed it with the wireframe on to get this abstract frame. Lastly, the actual portal gate is just a circle scaled and positioned to fit in. The wires are also pretty straightforward. Add a bezier curve, edit it to your needs, go to object data, geometry, bevel and give it some depth. I made one such wire and duplicated and tweaked it to get all of these. Lastly, we had the stairs here which I only added after my scene was complete and it wasn't making much sense. I even thought of adding some people marching towards the portal for a better meaning and sense of size and depth and that's why I was going for a staircase in the first place. But for the time limitation, I wasn't able to do it. And it was kind of getting on my nerves after a point anyway. But yeah, I basically modeled this one brick for the staircase and used an array modifier with an object offset and added an empty object to the scene to control the array. I used a count of around 27 and just fiddled around with the empty object to get the desired result. And for the stair that leads into the gate, I edited the base model a little bit and removed the modifier. After making all those pieces, we will have something that looks a bit like this. Now let's check it out in the camera. It looks pretty good, but the scene feels pretty empty since we don't have anything in the background. So let's make a few instances of this terrain by hitting Ctrl D on the keyboard and moving it where it fits in the background. Make sure to scale and rotate them to make them unique and seem less repetitive. That's pretty much it for the modeling side of the scene. Now let's move on to adding the basic lighting and all the materials. Before I go into the materials, which is going to be the longest part, I quickly wanted to give you an overview of the lighting. 
First of all, I have the super simple Kiara One Dawn HDRI as the environment lighting, which is also very overused by a lot of people for some reason. I'll leave a link to this HDRI in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so we have this HDRI connected to a mapping node using generated texture coordinate. I rotated it around to get a clear sky with some light leaking in from the left. Then I used this hue saturation value node to set the tone a bit better. After that, I set the strength to about 0.6 to get this evening sort of look, but I added volumetrics later so this step really doesn't matter much in my opinion, but it's always nice to fix things from the beginning. After that, I added a cube and scaled it up to cover the entire scene. Then I added a material to it and added a principal volume node and I connected it to the volume input in the principal shader. Then I put the density at around 0.001 and isotrop it to 0.2 to stretch out the light rays a little bit and used an emission of around 0.001 as well to get that foggy and hazy kind of look. Here are all the settings that I used. The lighting in the scene is pretty simple. Most of the other lighting comes from the materials of the portal itself. So let's take a look at the materials now. Let's hide the portal for now as we're going to take a look at the terrain's material first. The material might look a bit confusing at first, but if we look at the individual parts of it, it would make a lot of sense. Also, if you want this whole package along with the blend file and all the models, materials and lighting setup, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can download it. You don't have to download it to follow this tutorial, but if you want to support me and also are curious to break it down and use anything of the scene yourself, you can check it out. Okay, so first we simply have this principal shader with all these nodes attached to it for the textures. This is duplicated three times for the textures of the rocky part at the top of the mountains, the snowy rocks in the middle and the snow at the bottom. Let's take a look at the snow one first. We have this node group here which contains the albedo, roughness, normal and also the height textures for the snow. I didn't use the height texture at the end but, but you could easily use it with the displacement node if you want to. These textures are hooked up with the mapping node which I used for tiling the textures across the whole landscape. This mapping node is using the UV coordinate for this object. I unwrap this landscape model very simply by just going to the top view, selecting everything and hitting U, project from view. Then I set all the parameters necessary for the principal shader to make the snow look like what I wanted it to. After that, I duplicated this whole setup twice except the output node and the texture coordinate node for the rocky snow and the rocky mountain textures. Make sure to hit this little icon next to the name of the node group each time you duplicate it to make it unique and then you can change the textures to the textures that you want. Also make sure to tweak some of the parameters of the nodes to make it look the way you want it to. As our materials are now set up, we need to define where those textures are actually going to be applied and to do that we need to make height masks. Let's first mix both of the shaders by using a mix shader node. Make sure that you don't touch the factor input just yet. Just duplicate this and mix the third one with the first mix shader and connect this one to the material output. Let's first add a geometry node to get all the vector info out of this mesh. Let's add a combined XYZ node to make our lives a bit easier. Then we'll use a vector math node and connect it to both of these nodes and average them out. Now let's separate the axis again using a separate XYZ node to mask out the height of this landscape. Let's add a color ramp to preview it and bring the point somewhere around here to get a nice contrast which is always nice while masking textures. I also set the Z value for the combined node to about minus 0 0.070 which gave me this result. Now if you hook this color output to the factor of the mix shader node, we will see that it adds the rocky snow texture on the white areas of the mask. But since we only want this texture in between the snow and the rock, we will subtract some of the white areas of this mask from the top by using a similar mask. So. We'll simply duplicate this whole mask setup. Now let's change the Z value to somewhere around minus 0 0.210, which worked pretty well for me. Let's pull this point out like this to get an easier fade. Let's use a mix RGB node and subtract this mask from the mask that we made before by changing this to difference and hooking the first mask to color 1 and the second one to color 2. Now let's add this color output and put it through another color ramp to tweak it a bit more. We'll take the output of this color ramp and connect it to the factor input of the mix shader of the snow and rocky snow shaders. Also make sure to connect the first mask that is the mask for the rocks at the top to the mix shader of the rock textures. <sighs> you finally did it. You made the landscape material. If you did everything right, this is what it should look like. 
If you missed a step or two, you can rewatch the part and make sure you did everything right. I'll also put the whole material set up on the screen right now to help you out. Remember to always experiment with the stuff in the videos that you watch and not just blindly follow. Now it's time for the portals materials. Let's first see what's behind this glowing portal gate shall we. This setup is actually pretty simple. We basically have an emission shader with the strength set to around 3 and for the color we have a checkered texture with two shades of blue as the color 1 and color 2. I also set the scale to 2 and hooked up the vector input to the noise texture with the scale set to 5, detail to 3 and distortion to 2. You don't automatically know all the parameters, you have to test them out and see what works best for you. You might have noticed this weird color filling ring at the side of this portal gate. Let's see how I got that result. What I have for this is a principal shader and an emission shader. I added both of them together using the mix shader node and controlled the factor using different nodes. First I added a layer weight and used the noise texture to control the normal of that node to add this cool effect. The scale of this noise texture is set to around 30, detail to 20 and distortion to about 2. I also connected the Fresnel output of the layer weight to a color ramp and made it really contrasted by pulling these points very close to each other and somewhere around here. And if we connect the color output to the mix shaders factor, we should get this awesome look. For the rest of the meshes, I used similar techniques and just played around with the nodes to achieve different styles. Again, if you want to really look at what I did in depth, you can check out the project link in the description. I only broke down the materials for the landscape and the portal thoroughly since they were the most important parts in the scene. Now let's render this scene. Since we already have set up our camera in the beginning, we don't really need to do much. Make sure it's set to cycles and device to GPU compute if possible. I set the view transform to filmic and look to medium high contrast. We're also gonna set the render samples to 512. Now change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and set this to 100%. If you want a high res render, you could just change the percent value to something like 200 or 400 to multiply the resolution. Hit F12 and just chill for a while. I'm not gonna break down the compositing inside Blender thoroughly as it is optional and can be done in Photoshop as well. So here's a screenshot of everything that I used to get the glare and the light shafts from the portal. Now open up Photoshop to complete the rest of the scene. I'm pretty sure that the snow particles can be done better in Blender but I don't have a PC powerful enough to handle that many particles so I just stuck with Photoshop for the scene. To save some time, I'll link a video which shows you exactly how to make this kind of snow in Photoshop. I'm not very good with it so bear with me. But yeah, I basically added this desert image behind the portal by adding a layer on top of it with the blend mode set to soft light and opacity to about 50%. I also added a hue saturation layer and bumped up the saturation just a little bit. Then I added a glow effect to some parts to make them pop a bit more. To do that, press Ctrl Shift N to make a new layer. Change the mood to color dodge and check this checkbox to fill it in with black which is the default color for color dodge. Now you can use a brush with a very low flow and gently paint over the parts that you want to highlight. Lastly, I added these gradients at the corners for some slight extra details. Make sure to follow the links in the description as I will link a lot of important stuff there which will definitely help you make this scene much better. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and sticking till the end. I really hope you liked it. If you did, make sure to subscribe and destroy that like button. If you have any questions about anything, you can just leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer it to you. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.